Hello and welcome back to Floor Planner. My name is Bob and as you all know I am here for customer success. I'm here for you all so I want to go ahead and share with you the latest features that were added as updates last month as I do on a monthly basis and give you some actual presentation how, how to utilize them. Um, welcome to the summer period. You know this, this is holiday time so we're gonna be a little short-listed. I think we have a three updates from last month. So let's take a peek. Of course, when you go ahead and log into your floorplanner.com and register into your subscription, um, I'll show you where those updates are posted just so you remember where the list is. Let's go back to my home page, which is my dashboard, upper left-hand corner, where you have your icon of the floor planner logo, little house. Uh, left click on there. And on your right hand side, you have a right hand toolbar and inside there you're going to see right underneath the registration for the webinars is the new features. This is where we're going to and this first item up here is the latest update um, from last month. And if you want to see all of them, you can go ahead and hit the more button in the upper right hand corner of that box more. And this is what you will see. Now you can go ahead and scroll through all of the updates that have happened um, in the past year. I think if you haven't done so, please do so. Uh, at, at a quick glance, you'll see lots of features that maybe you might have missed along the way. Um, last month prior, we were doing some reviews, uh, talking about the text labels, which we did last time. And then we talked more about the new options for editing in 3D, which are fabulous. Um, I'm really enjoying those and they're getting better and better. Um, but here's where we're going to start for today. We're going to look at the new project pop up. You've probably already seen this when you've been creating your new projects. Um, it looks different than it used to. Um, much like with the other windows that have been added and the sidebars, everything is right in front of you. So you can see all the information right at a glance. You know exactly where you're going. There's no additional pull downs. Um, very simple read. We're going to take a peek at that and the features that are there. Then we're going to talk about the improved material sidebar. Really cool. Um, when you actually select a material and know that you can change the settings on it, uh, we'll walk you through some of those details and how you can actually switch out materials. And then still continuing to talk about the 3D uh, handlers and the fact that they're getting better and better and more accurate. And uh, I think we'll have a little fun in there doing some magic and moving around items while you're actually in 3D and showing you what you can do to edit while you're in 3D also. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the uh, new project pop-up. So let's go back to my dashboard and let's start a new project. So here we are on my profile. Let's hit the uh, create project tab. And this is your new pop-up. So let's take a peek at what we have going on in here. Uh, certainly we could just go ahead and run with the default name and just say a start project and off we go. Um, I think we wanna go ahead and certainly take a moment and actually name our project. I'll just call it uh, Bob Demo for today. Um, you also have the ability to classify um, subclass your project if you wanted to have them in groupings. If you're a larger, more corporate account with Floor Planner, you may want to do this for your team and your associates so you can pull up specific groupings of projects. Um, there's some quick labels in here if you want to go ahead and have a label associated with your project or you can create your own, um, which is pretty awesome. So think about how you want to categorize or do your search. Um, you can always add an address for the project that you're working on. You don't have to at the beginning and startup of your project. You can go back here and edit details later and add this information later down the road. Um, there is the ability to, within this project we're creating, to upload another project that you may have downloaded. Um, there is the floor planner format mode um, that you can or import the FML. Um, it's typically a backup, uh, although your files are backed up in the cloud. So it's a matter if you ever had downloaded those and wanted to upload one into your new project. 
Let's look in the upper left hand corner and you can see that I've started this project by default as a project level one project. Remember, of course, there are four different project levels within Floor Planner. But if I wanted to take this project uh, up to a, a different level for the different tools and features that are available, uh, I like working in level two myself. Um, you can take this pull down menu right here. And this is where you can select uh, while you're in this uh, startup window. And you can go ahead and do the upgrade right here. So I say, you know, I, will, I want to start with a level two. I'll just go right to a level two project. And it says project of level two. Uh, it's telling me that these are the features that are going to be available as the level two when I start that project. It also gives me a status as to my credits that I have on hand, the cost for this upgrade, which is two credits to take myself up to a level two, if I accept that by starting the project. And then it'll be my new balance after the fact. So all that information has been included. So pretty cool. There's the project cost for the upgrade that I'm doing to a level two. And I just hit start project. It goes down to the cloud. And of course, you know that we have our wizard at this point that we can do a room wizard or upload a background image or start our project with an empty plan. And there you go. This project as Bob Demo is ready to go from that startup window. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save this for future reference. And I'm gonna go back to my homepage because I'm going to see about working with another example project that already have some assets in that we can play with for this material changes because we're talking about these updates that are running. We just talked about the pop-up. So we're gonna talk So we're gonna talk about the improved material sidebar. The way you select and edit materials and colors via the sidebar has been improved. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you can now also preview materials before applying them to your floor or wall using the eye icon. So let's go ahead and go back to my dashboard, back to a project. And let's open up a demo project right here. Okay, project, take a peek at. So let's talk about the materials in here. So we could go ahead and select this room, left click on it. And you can see that my materials over here on the left-hand side, if I go ahead and open up my material that's associated on that floor as I've already added one. And this is my left-hand sidebar. And you can see that I have an option in here, certainly that I could remove this material. Um, and I could remove it from my favorites if it was favorite. And I could go ahead and go into material settings. Let's take a look at material settings for a moment. And this is really awesome. So you've got the material over here and we could go ahead and certainly change the materials rotation, the planks, change them from horizontal to have them so they change to vertical 90 degrees. Change that out as 90. And you can also change the scaling uh, the horizontal and the vertical. In this case, with a planked wood flooring, you can go ahead and start increasing the lengths of the planks, as you can see. Or we could start changing the vertical scale, which will start changing the thickness of the planks. There's also the ability, um, interior designers like this, you know, you want to figure exactly which plank is actually going to start right at the wall surface. Well, we certainly could go in here and change the horizontal or the vertical offset which starts changing the placement. Although we've already made the adjustments to the scale, we're not changing the scale at this point, we're actually just shifting the image. So you can determine as to exactly where you want to have those planks start or even in the other direction in the vertical offset. Let's go back for a second. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and add another material over here, you have your material bar over here. And we could take, let's take a peek at this information tab for a second for maybe another material, see what that looks like. Great. Get a preview image of what that material is. Now we could also certainly go ahead and drag and drop a new material onto that floor. And again, if we select that floor material over here on the left-hand sidebar, 
there is your additional information. Now, if you wanted to change that material, you could also say, well, let's choose a different material over here on the left-hand sidebar and go shopping for something maybe a little bit more neutral and just pick another material to switch it out to. And of course, then you can select that material here. There it is called lime wood. And I could go ahead and go into its material settings yet again and maybe change that rotation of that plank as we just did previously, another 90 degrees going the other direction. And of course we could change the thickness and such. So let's hit save on that. And that gives you all those new abilities to change out materials by selection with that left-hand sidebar. Let's take another peek at our updates, make sure we're not missing anything. Okay, and up here, let's take a look at the easier selecting in 3D. <clears throat> selecting objects in 3D has become more accurate with the handlers uh, to move and rotate an item are also improved just as some other small 3D issues have that have been fixed, yay. Um, so yes, it is much more responsive now. So uh, certainly I shared the last time that these handlers exist, um, but they are becoming more accurate. So let's, let's take a peek at the example I just showed you. Let's get back to my project. Okay, so of course, you know, we can navigate and move our items in 2D, but the fun now is in working everything in 3D. It used to be that you had to hop between 2D and 3D. So let's just go right into 3D and we can actually do a lot while we're in the 3D mode. So we're just in one camera view currently inside the space. Now we can go ahead and select an item, of course, or select any items. So get that little ottoman over there. Now, once it's selected, we can certainly go ahead and change its location and move it freestyle anywhere on the floor we want to. Um, yet you also have the left-hand sidebar showing up with the item that's selected. So yes, there it is. You can also visit the store on this particular item, but you can also go into its settings. If you go to the settings of the item that's selected while we're still in 3D, you could actually go ahead and if it gave you the ability to do so, you could actually change the dimensions over here. And you also have these functions in here where you can actually lift the item up off the floor, raise from floor. You can change its rotation with a numeric entry. You can also tilt an item. Not so sure that this is an item I want to tilt, but you can now tilt items possibly if you had a mirror and you wanted to lean it up against the wall or decorative pillows that are sitting on top of your sofa that you wanna make it look a little bit more organic. Um, you can go ahead and tilt them, not only rotate them, but you can also tilt them. And then you have these uh, many, many, many pieces down here that you can go ahead and actually rotate the item uh, 90 degrees in either direction. You can also flip an item left and right, although this does not make a lot of difference with this symmetrically perfect ottoman. Um, it's a push down, which we'll play with in a second with maybe some other items just to show you that it can find the surface below itself to make sure it's resting upon it. Um, right now, uh, furniture items, of course, are sitting on the floor, which is zero with no problem. Cool feature while you're in 3D now is that you can actually delete the item. So it used to be you had to go back into 2D, make your deletions, um, but now you can actually choose an item while you're in 3D and say, ah, you know, really don't want that there. You can go ahead and delete it while you're here. So let's, let's hit delete and get rid of that ottoman just for the sake of showing it. Ottoman's gone. So other items that are in here, it's certainly let's um, play with that push down mode for a second. So maybe these books that are sitting on top of this cocktail table right now, they are resting on top of the cocktail table, but I'm going to go ahead and actually just lift this with the handler over here and just lift it up in the air. Okay, well, well, we certainly don't want the books floating up in the air. So if I select those books, I could drag them back down. Yet, if I want them to find the exact surface that they're supposed to be sitting on, go back to settings. And inside settings, there is that push down command. So if you select the push down, it finds the elevated surface that it's supposed to be landing on the next surface below itself, which is the top of the cocktail table. 
And same idea, maybe one of these plants, um, you know, that we can move it orthogonally with the handlers down here or go the other direction. And we can actually rotate it down here visually or again, lift it up in the air, whoops, and go up. Oh no, I wanna put it back on the table. So let's go back into settings and there's that push down mode. And I'm see if the mirror image left and right, you can flip it both directions. And of course you can rotate it 90 degrees at a time, both directions. We could delete the item or you can numerically enter that same information up here for its rotation or the rays from floor. Of course, right now it is sitting on top of the table. So we're happy with that. And if there's any dimensional changes that were available, I think I can make this orchid a little bit bigger. So what if we make it taller? Yeah, it's growing in height, not even watering it and it's growing, yay. Um, maybe change its width and its length, which will start making this a larger plant. We could go crazy. What if I take this up to, just to make it more obvious, maybe um, 18 inches? Go crazy, makes it an oblong, maybe make this 18 inches. And maybe it make its height um, 20 inches. So visually, while we're actually in the 3D view, um, you can make these decisions because this is how you're going to see the space and you're actually seeing it in a sense of perspective. Um, artwork on the wall, same idea. Um, really cool is that artwork, of course, adheres to the wall. So selecting an item on the wall, you can certainly move it in the uh, orthogonal directions. Um, and you can also visually move it up and down. And if you knew the numeric entry on those from exactly how you want to raise them from floor, you can actually enter them over here. And you can even, maybe these pieces of art are just a little bit too small, go to the settings in here. And the same idea that we just did with the orchid, where you could certainly change you know, the dimensions of these. Maybe I want to make these 24 inch by 24 inch instead and make it a larger piece of art. And it's bigger and just change its placement again. So you have full power while you're in 3D to make all these changes, especially placing your TV. We all have difficulty determining where we're going to place our TVs. And hopefully we get them absolutely right because this is an 80 inch TV. Um, so you can actually show that placement here. And again, all these wall mounted items adhere to the walls. So moving them, uh, much like your floor mounted items uh, or items that are resting on your floor, it it's really, really easy. Or this mirror item over here, I could all of a sudden say, you know, I want to place it somewhere else visually. Um, and the books over here, same idea. Lifting and say, yeah, let's take them back down. So again, the, the movement in 3D with the 3D handlers just keeps getting better and better. Please go ahead and enjoy this and check out the left-hand sidebar with the settings and utilizing the handlers. And I think that's gonna wrap us up for today. Let's get back to our list, make sure we're good. And sure enough, that was our last item from 10 days ago for its update. So I hope you enjoyed those last three from last month. I look forward to sharing more with you in our next video for next month. So keep your eyes open um, and certainly do follow Floor Planner on Twitter um, because the programmers tend to post out a tweet with any of these updates so you can see them in advance, even in advance of me showcasing them with you. Hope you all have a great day and thanks for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.